Good afternoon. Good afternoon, all the friends and the shareholders. I'm very happy to be back with uh, the investor conference after some gap due to some logistics reason. So I must say that this is the right time of the year to have the calls and have the results because the festivities have started, country is booming, and of course in Delhi the winter is already there. I can see the cloudy weather already outside, so, but good fun. So we had uh, as already shared the results uh, yesterday on the stock exchange, and I'm sure uh, you might have a chance to go through. So I'll just uh, give you a running commentary what it is going, and of course, uh, after that you can uh, ask a question. If you look at the quarter as a whole, this was a phenomenal quarter as compared to the previous years. So the quarter as a whole had been very uh, smooth against uh, the 403 crores uh, last year, 404 crores, we have blocked 425 crores. So on the revenue side, it looks like that the, there's a 5% increase. So though at a number of 400 and 425, they don't look very big, 5% increase in revenue. But if you look at the individual business segment, when we will go further, you will see that there's a lot happening. The interesting point here is that with the nominal 5% increase in the net revenues, our profit after tax has gone up 34%. You can imagine before tax is naturally much more. So after tax profit is 34% increase. From 15.82 crore, it has jumped to 21.26 crore. So that's the net summary of the quarter. But if we go further and look at the half yearly results also, so there is a wonderful improvement in the results. So we have uh, from 707 crores moved to 828 crores in the half year. There's an absolute increase of 17% for the half year. Last quarter was around 33%. This year is around 5%, an average 17% increase in the half year. But sometime, uh, some, we are in a B2B business, most of the business is B2B. Sometimes the customer buys material in one quarter, sometimes the shipment goes to the next quarter. So quarter on quarter variations are obviously covered when we look at the half yearly results. So on a half yearly basis, there is a 17% increase in the revenue, including all segments, and uh, the profit has jumped almost by two thirds. There is a 67% growth in the profit after tax in the first half of the year as compared to the last year. Here I would say, though the numbers are small, from 21 crores to 36 crores, but important here is that last year the business uh, was not very, I would say, buoyant, and there were surplus inventories in the market, there was a price crash, and there were too many things happening around because the market was stabilizing. So thankfully, for the last two consecutive quarters, the business has stabilized, and it is on a growth track. Of course, uh, the travels have started and our teams are visiting customers and of course uh, there are exhibitions happening whether in Thailand or China, now recently it was in uh, Europe, Barcelona, now there's an exhibition happening in India, CCHA in November, it is happening in Noida. So I would say all around there's a happy, happy situation. And uh, overall from a 5% in quarter one, 17% in H1, that's the starting point. If I look at the highlights, which is already there in the presentation, the domestic revenue is up 26% in the first half in the quarter and 31% in the first half. This uh, uh, the domestic revenue has gone under 280 crores. So this itself shows that uh, there is uh, much improvement. But major improvement here in the domestic revenue is coming from finished losses, uh, from uh, medical devices. Because in the API, export is up by 14% and domestic is down by 13%. So in the API segment, we have tried to avoid uh, domestic uh, sales and try to push more towards exports. But yes, we have to cater to both the markets. But as compared to the last year, domestic market has declined. And uh, of course, in the overall API segment has grown 5%. Medical devices, like I said, had a jump of 41%. It was a huge jump in this quarter. And in the H1 also, for the half year also, medical devices have grown by 44%. So I would say it's a phenomenal growth, and the team is working very hard for the better reach and, of course, uh, better production. 
The late dosage market, which is our domestic formulations, this has been growing consistently. In the first half, it has grown by 12%, while in the quarter, it has grown 16%. So, very good growth, very stable growth. Now, the interesting point is, after all the upsides and downsides in the sales, EBITDA has grown up by 24%. That is what comes to the bottom. That is what is adding to the bottom line. And for the first half, H1, EBITDA is up 44%. Of course, uh, there is an uh, upside in the percentage, but amount also, and more important is that there is a lot of control in the expense side also. So we are very confident that going forward, we'll be able to continue and maintain these EBITDA levels. So of course, the nice EBITDA is giving us a good jump in the profit, 29% in the Q2, and 61% profit up in first half, which is phenomenal again. And uh, PAT, which is uh, the a profit after tax, there is an increase of 34%. So on the whole, if we look at it, all parameters are positive, and the company is on a growth path, even though we had a little slowdown in the previous year. So this year, comparing with the previous years, actually the numbers are looking very fancy, but major is that there is a stabilized growth. And uh, if we look at the top line quarter and quarter basis, so last year, same quarter was almost 400 crores, and then 350, then 360, then 403, then 425. We look at the bottom, if the bottom was last year, third quarter. So from there, we have grown up almost 20%, but uh, quarter on quarter also we have grown 5%. Year on year also we have grown 5%. But if you look at the half year, half year the revenues is 17% growth. Now in the half year, our revenue is 828 crores, by last year, half year was 707 crores. So all, we have added almost 121 crores of business in first half. And uh, if you look at the CAGR of the company as a whole, the company had been growing at 19% CAGR. So 19% CAGR or a compounded annual growth rate is pretty good in today's market while the whole world is trying here and there are so many turmoils happening, sometimes in China, sometimes in Israel, sometimes in Russia, but uh, we have been consistently growing at CAGR of 19%, so that speaks volumes about the efforts the team is doing. This is on the overall performance. If we go to the individual segments, as you already know that uh, we are an integrated company with uh, uh, most of the uh, I would say forward integration and backward integration or everything under one company. Our core business is API, which is in the parent company. Then medical devices. Medical devices also, as in today, still it is in the parent company, but there's a plan to move it to the separate subsidiary. Between API and medical devices, this is like uh, 80 to 90 percent of the business. Then formulation business, till last quarter, it was in the same company. Uh, in Mortal Laboratories Limited, but in uh, 15th of August, it has been moved to a separate subsidiary, Mortal RX Limited. So now this quarter, half of the sales is clocked in the parent company, half is clocked in the RX, Mortal RX Limited in the subsidiary, but everything is consolidated in the parent balance sheet only. That's 100% subsidiary. So over the counter, which is the OTC, Dr. Morgan products, Bernon, Lemolate, ORS, all those products, those are already in the subsidiary. So we have two active subsidiaries now. Other than this, we have uh, one passive subsidiary, total care, there's no you know, much business in that. And then there is a US subsidiary, which is just a front end of uh, uh, Morpen for API. So there's no extra business, only the sales of US is handled through that US subsidiary. So that also consolidates back to parent company. So that's about the different segments, but if we go further down and see which segment has grown, which segment has grown less or more, API business, uh, as I shared in the first half, has grown by 5%, but during this quarter, this is technically down by 13% by revenue, but if you look at the uh, micro details, API revenue is down, but API volume has gone up by 25%. The number of tons or number of kg material produced is up 25%, but there is a reduction in the sale price because last year there was a lot of increase in the cost of raw materials. Because of increased cost of raw materials, we had to increase the prices also. We were not able to pass on fully, but there was an increase. 
but now prices are softening and the benefit is being passed to the customer. So there is, as compared to the last year, there is a 28% reduction in the sales utilization. Because of this, we have to produce more quantity even to maintain the same level. So, but all the customers have ordered the same good, you have been able to maintain the same gross margin. But on the face of it, it looks like the realization is low. But uh, going forward, as the market firms up a little better, we'll have better realization and better uh, numbers for sure. But uh, good point is that the volumes are growing, we are increasing capacities. And as we shared in our last quarter and uh, during our EGM also, uh, there's a lot of pressure in the production. We are falling short of capacities, so we have to enhance capacities. So when we come to product-wise product, we'll explain you what is happening at that level. Second segment is medical devices. As I already shared, there's a 41% increase in the medical devices, 44% in the half year. In is to say 16% in the quarter and 12% in the half year. And OTC is 22% increase in the quarter. And uh, it is almost quite, when we talk of half year, it is minus 3% in the half year. That's the segment-wise thing. And if I now look at the API revenues, now I'm going segment by segment. API revenues has been growing by CAGR of 20% so far. Now uh, we have clocked 415 crores already, and uh, as compared to 394 crores last year, there's a 5% YOI growth, year on year growth. And uh, similarly for the quarter also, it has a 5% increase, uh, quarter on quarter. Last quarter it was 203, now it is 212. But here, uh, as you would see in the presentation, which is already there with you, that there is a almost a stable at 200 crore, 200, 215. So this is where I think uh, we ha have to find, uh, uh, we are trying to look at more products and more capacity enhancement. Otherwise, we don't see much growth happening around. But uh, while we stabilize the growth at this level, now we see that, okay, how do we go higher from this in the API business? If I look at the continent-wise sales, this is a, there's an interesting development that the U.S. market share has gone up by almost 2.5% from 12.9% to 15.3% because U.S. exports have gone up because of a new product approval, Vexofinidin, that's Telegraph in the U.S. Europe market, this quarter, this first half hasn't done very well. Some of the countries have not been able to reply. You know the reason. Europe was very disturbed because of that Russia thing, and lately also it is disturbed. The Europe market, uh, we have lost almost 5% market share within our own uh, division. Asian market has also been down from 21% to 19% something uh, because of the China factor. And of course, uh, certain other uh, Middle East countries uh, are also down in the MENA market from 12.1% to 9%. But there is an upside in Indian market from 30.6% to 34.8%, the Indian market has gone up. South American market has also gone up. So if we see on the whole, India has gone up, South America has gone up, US has gone up. So these are the three major markets which has gone up. So in the first half, but let's see, there are two other quarters pending. So here as a whole, we'll give you how does it everything falls forward. If you look at the major products which are contributing to the API growth, so as I shared in the U.S. market, it is exoplanetine, there is 413% increase as compared to the last year. Rosuvastatin, that's uh, anti-cholesterol, cholesterol reducing agent, 26% increase. Atorvastatin again for cholesterol, there is a 12% increase. And another sartan, which is a cardiac product, only sartan. So this is 129% increase. These are the major products which have contributed to the increase. And certainly, uh, one must say in case there is a 400-200% growth in the products, why is the sales only 5% increase? So, in one of the products, Loratadine, which is our major product for U.S. market, so there is a decrease in sale because the customer did not get tender for this particular year. So, it was based on the whole common supply. Maybe they get a tender late in this year or maybe next year. So, there is a gap there. But as a whole, U.S. market is growing. So coming to the core of the API, and uh, if you track the social media like LinkedIn or other platforms, uh, there are a lot, the company is getting very, 
to look active in the filing of DMS and in filing of the patents and filing of the CPs and a registration. So the company is already approved by US FDA, EDQM, UGMP, then CMDA Japan, and Visa Brazil, KFTA from Korea, then PG Australia, then China, and of course the WHO GMP. So we have got all the approvals. As it stands today, we have 543 patents, there are 26 US DMS, there are 11 CPs for the European market, then for the China market, we have got eight uh, import licenses, then non US DMS for all other countries, whether Europe or Asia or South Africa or Tanzania or the world. So we have 185 DMS filed for the various products. And we have launched 41 new products in the last eight years. So this is a big uh, work which our regulatory and uh, RA team is doing. So if you look at the new DMF filing, so we have filed new DMF for Desloratadine, Loratadine, Edoxaban, Devaroxaban, Multilucash, Linagliptin, Cetagliptin, for a different form of Linagliptin, then there's a Satsagliptin. So there have been various filings with the DMS. And on the new patent, we got new patent for Rivaroxaban, Paxofenadine, Tapagliflozine. So there's a lot of activities happening. Basically, this is what the company company's future is. The more products we launch, more DMS we have, more patents we file. So this gives us an opportunity to interact with the customers and customers get comfort level that we have got a IP in this segment. So as I shared that we have been developing new products every quarter, so there's an interesting product, Alphabetis, which has been developed, uh, basically it is used for cardiomyopathy, so basically once uh, the heart has got, uh, muscles get hard and it cannot pump more blood, so we use Alphabetis, so it is basically soften those muscles. And another product is uh, Tika Grillor, Tika Grillor is more of a anti-platelet, basically whenever you have any Clots in the blood, so they, they give you Tika Grillor. So this is, these are the two important products which have been recently launched, and we are now looking for more customers acquisition in these two products. As I shared, that uh, we are falling short of the capacities, and the customers are asking more and more material, even though the prices are lesser. So we have started new production block P11. And uh, please don't get confused with the name P11. We already have 10 production blocks, P1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10. So the P11 is a new production block with 11K also. So this is the 11th production block because we have a 60 acres of land parcel and different production blocks. So this is a new production block come up. Then we have increased the capacity of Montelukast from 55 tons to 66 tons. So this is also because of the increased demand and as we shared earlier that there are more supplies to the domestic market. So Indian market consumes more Montreal cars than the European and US market. So there is a lot of supplies going in the Montreal cars. So now coming to the interesting uh, medical devices or diagnostic business. This has been growing at a CAGR of 25% year on year and uh, for the last three years it has been growing. Now this year the growth is 44%. Now you can imagine against 25% CAGR we are already at 44%. So in case we continue even we, we get 30-35% growth in the year. So that would be a good growth. And uh, looking at quarter on quarter also as compared to the first quarter and second quarter there is 16% growth. When we compare the quarterly results, we compare quarter on quarter because there is a sequential thing. But when we look at the yearly, then we look at the average number. So on quarter on quarter also there is a sixteen percent increase and on the CAGR basis also there is an increase. Medical devices as a whole business is doing very good. We are already at two hundred and forty eight crores. So last year total was three twenty seven crores. So maybe this year we'll easily cross four hundred crores. So within medical devices, so our major business is glucometers, which has grown by 42%. We are almost 200 crores uh, already in the meters, glucometers and strips. Quarter on quarter it is 12% and uh, for the half year it is 42%. So there are more and more meters being installed and we have a, a happy customer base of 10.6 million uh, numbers, so uh, and almost 11 million customers, satisfied happy customers who buy our strips regularly and of course this number keeps on increasing. 
So we have sold almost 1.4 billion strips, which is almost equivalent to population of India. So in case, I mean, just to give a reference, is every Indian use one strip, so, so many strips we have already sold. So now there are uh, 11 billion active users and customers who place orders regularly and they buy other products also. So we have sold uh, in the first half 1.26 million meters. Then coming to the next products, which is BP monitors. This is also doing very nicely and there is a 52% increase in the first half itself as compared to the last year. So it is as good as the COVID level. During COVID the time maximum was 84 crores sales for this product. Now in half year we have locked 44 crores. So quarter on quarter it has increased 20%. So BP is growing, Gluco is growing, rest are small products. So for the purpose of this presentation we have to go that. Then coming to the typical formulation business, which is uh, our doctor prescription, formulation manufacturing, institution supplies, supplies to Jan Oshidi, and supplies to other government schemes. So there is a 12% increase year on year, and for the quarter on quarter, there is a 4% growth. So very stable business, very regular business, and we are here are expanding the team increasing the team slowly and uh, this is one of the major area of expansion we want to focus. Here our growth has been pretty slow till date. It is CAGR is 10% as compared to 18% in API and 29% in medical devices. It's only 10% CAGR. So this is our focus area for the future. And in the formulation business, the growth had been more from the antibiotics, 24% is antibiotics. Vitamins haven't grown much, it's only 5%. 52% growth is coming on the gastro products and 135% growth on the small, other small products. Then coming to the Dr. Morten OTC, which is our brand, I would say our darling. So Dr. Morton is a very uh, nice brand with the uh, most more popular brand like Pernod and Lemolate in it. So it has grown 9% quarter on quarter, but while for the year is, uh, for the half year it is almost flat from 49 crores to 48 crores, so 1 or 2% up or down. But it had been growing consistently at CAGR of 13%. So all businesses have been growing consistently. When you look at the overall, but last couple of years because of this COVID, pre-COVID, post-COVID, there were a lot of fluctuations, but now things are stabilizing, thankfully. So in uh, Dr. Morton OTC, the major growth drivers was Bernal, and as you know, Bernal is a very prestigious product. It's a 75-year-old burn product. This is the only one burn cream in the country, and which has uh, the highest recall, and uh, other than using Bernal, people use Bernal for having a lot of other means also, a lot of political jokes are cracked around Bernal. So it's a very good brand recall. Then ORS is a very, very good product for us, oral dehydration salts, so this is 76% growth in that. Then general health, wherein we have a generic basket of products, 38% growth. But in uh, here, there is one category which uh, we are strategically declining is online. We were investing a lot of money in the online during COVID time and post-COVID also, but we have seen that the online business consumes a lot of capital and needs a lot of marketing spend, and it is more of a valuation game and not a profit game. So we are strategically reducing our spend on the online, and uh, there is a 31% reduction in the field also. Then coming to the last uh, slide on the financial highlights. And uh, as I already shared, net revenue up 5%, EBITDA 24%, profit before tax is up 29%, profit after tax 34%. So that's on the quarterly basis. If you look at the half yearly basis, net revenue up 17%, EBITDA up 44%, profit up 61%. I think we have discussed that. Profit after tax up 67%. These are the two main. Uh, financial slides. Then in the presentation you can have a look, there are, we have talked beyond numbers also because numbers are only the results, but who is producing the numbers, so naturally there are people behind it, there's the talent behind it, so the whole journey which happens day in, day out. 
So we are adding a lot of uh, fresh talent and uh, with diverse experience and of course with new potential coming up. So we have uh, onboarded a lot of senior members on the team. So we have a chief growth officer in API now, Lalit Bayagama. He has 20 years of experience with companies like Tadila, Vimta Labs, and uh, it. Then Pramod Singh has recently joined. He's from Centrian and DSM, Sinochem, 25 years of experience. Mr. Mahesh Tiwari, again a territory growth head, 17 years of experience from Philippines. Manish Gupta, again a territory head, again from Jubilant, Sun Pharma, Biofon. So basically, we are getting the best talent in the market, and more and more uh, people are happy to join a winning team. And on the formulation side also, we got uh, a senior uh, AV team, so Ashutosh Sharma, with 29 years of experience with Netco, Cadillac, Torrent. Then Mr. Puneet Chawla has joined as a national sales manager for the RX, again 21 years experience, and I said by a corner is true. So we are getting talent from the industry. On the plant uh, side, we have uh, recently had Anju Singh as our DJ major, and I mean, she's also having 20 years of experience. Indra and uh, Edu Unit. And on the corporate communication side, we have uh, added Ditika Seni, who is our corporate communication manager. She was the NGO volunteer at Tetru, she has all this international experience. Basically, we are growing on all fronts and adding good talent. And as a company, we are seeing that as a company is growing, and I'm happy to share that we got more than 3,000 people on board now. So we have to have a lot of employee engagement, teamwork, and team spirits. So around six months ago, we started a weekly feature of Bubble Chat, wherein uh, uh, it's a company in-house talk show, wherein we interview the senior people, industry leaders, and slowly, slowly, in the season one, we had a weekly show. Now we have moved it to monthly. So here, more and more people are given chance to interact with the industry, with the seniors, from the seniors from the plant, seniors from the head office, and even the industry experts like Dr. Ram Charan, who is a global CEO advisor, and we had invited Mr. Shiv Khera once. Then we have some, some the medical tips, some the nutrition tips. Basically, the whole idea is to interact with the people and understand them and connect with them. And of course, uh, these days, uh, now it has gone a uh, little more further, and now we do a live streaming of Bubble uh, Chat so that people can join from the outside also, whosoever has interest in that. And as a second effort, we are doing mentorship programs for the team for their knowledge enhancement, skill development, and uh, we had a master class uh, this month, early this month, rather uh, last month, 3rd of October. By Dr. Ram Charan, and of course, again, it was uh, 150 people who attended that master class. Then the company has been uh, working hard on the employee motivation and uh, development and teamwork, and we have been awarded the best company to work for in 2023 by Great Rock. So their team that visited two, three times, they did all the survey and research. And of course, interview the people. So they have awarded us a prize for the best company to work. Of course, miles to go, but a uh, lot of activities happening to keep the team motivated. So, as advised by uh, our uh, masters and uh, our third party consultants, to keep pace with the change, we are trying to have a uh, better connect <coughs> on digitization and technology. So, we have done three, four initiatives lately. So there's a program called Connect 360. So this is our in-house program wherein we have a lot of initiatives to connect with the team members through technology, one-on-one -on -one talks, relationships, so that we keep the team motivated. Then for the fast communication and for to avoid any confusions other than email, we have started a process called Slack. So this is more like a, a combination of, I would say, WhatsApp and email. It works like WhatsApp, it, but it is more uh, regulated and controlled and secret and controlled. So it sits on the company server and there's no privacy issues, so nobody can delete the data. So even if someone leaves this data and his chats are reserved with the company, it's not his property. So we have initiated that, and uh, lately we have uh, activated a uh, consumer front uh, Salesforce. So Salesforce is a package for CRM, which is a customer relationship management. So this is also one of the best even the best uh, software which is available in the world. Yes, so of course, uh, then 
a lot of other activities happening within the company to keep the employees motivated and overall I would say we, we carry on the team of this connect, communicate and collaborate. This year that's the theme. Last year we post COVID we were our theme was uh, love heal because everybody needs more love and more human connect. So now it is connect, communicate and collaborate. So there's a lot of effort going on connect and communicate and of course ultimately it is collaborate. So I would say this is the broad uh, commentary on the results. So of course I can keep on talking more but uh, I would uh, leave it for uh, you guys to open for the question answer. Or if uh, again you want to throw some light on the numbers and results, or if you want to try to say any questions on that. Interesting. Uh, numbers here already covered. So we can take up the questions. Yeah. Uh, so whenever it comes. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Yeah. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Darshit from Rogopo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, am I audible? Yes, please. Yes. Hi. So, thank you for taking my question. Uh, I just uh, wanted like a basic overview for the next uh, two, three years. What are the plans? How are we moving forward with them? And if there are any key drivers or if you can give some idea on, you know, revenue and margins. Good. Uh, as uh, uh, I only shared that all businesses are at growth path, but certainly we are very positive and bullish that the current growth of uh, CAGR of 15 to 20% will continue. So, of course, within each segment, some segment may be up one quarter or maybe down next quarter or depending on the market season and availability of materials because there's a lot of uh, uh, dependence on imports earlier. But overall, 15 to 20 percent, I would say outside 20 percent, 15 percent bare minimum CAGR, we would uh, expect to clock continuously. And as uh, we keep on growing, so our margins uh, certainly will go up. As you have seen that last year it was around 6.5 percent, now it is 8 point something. So on an average, 2 or 2 percent uh, margins have gone up, net EBITDA margins. So since the expenses are already there, team is already there, and of course we are no doubt expanding the teams also, but the basic uh, things are covered, so any increase in the revenue is going to add up to the bottom line also. And as we go forward from an overall perspective, uh, the growth drivers, if we say, the API will continue growing separately, medical devices is already growing fast, it will grow faster, and finished dosage is one of our other area of API are going to focus. OTC is going to remain a uh, little quiet because it needs a lot of investments. So we are expanding the capacities of API and the finished process for Okay. Okay. So, uh, like, do we see the margin, the previous margins of, say, 11 to 12 percent anytime soon or probably in one or two years? Yeah, I would say it's a slow process and actually we have seen last year that if you have any excessive growth in very particular year, that, that's not good for anybody. So we are going very slow and steady and uh, we are actually not making any so-called fast moves to get fast buck because we are a very traditional brick and mortar company. So we have to set up plants, machineries, R&D, regulatory environment, so we will keep on doing that. and. Uh, we certainly expect uh, EBITDA margins to be in the uh, two digits uh, in the next financial year. Okay, in the next financial year. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Darshit. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurav Butra from IFS Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for taking the question. Sir, I just want a color on the API businesses. What you see in the API businesses in the upcoming, uh, say, one to two years, and what will be the margin in the API businesses? Can you give the color on this? 
Yes, sort of as uh, uh, we, we have shared multiple times that our core is API, our DNA is API. So we are uh, certainly pretty strong and uh, very bullish on the API. Here there are basically two main things. One is the regulatory part, which is uh, the regulatory skills like FDA approvals and filing of PMFs and patents, which we proudly say we are good at. And uh, we shared on the earlier forum that we have a nil 483 for FDA approval, we have a hat trick of nil 483, so we are pretty good on that. Now the second part, other than the regulatory and compliance part, is the capacity. So the companies with large capacities and huge capacities and infrastructure, certainly they will be able to compete better because the, the whole world is looking at India as a resource center, as, as a sourcing hub. And that is against, as against China, I would say. So China has got huge capacity, but they are very weak in the regulatory. That's why I mentioned regulatory setup as the first thing. So as an India market, we are very strong in regulatory, but certainly we have low capital base and we do not have a large capacity. So that is, as a company, so our strategy would remain that we keep investing in the capacity and we are investing as we go. So we see that API to be very bullish and uh, the manufacturing hub, India, China has already crossed that hump. I mean, they have become the manufacturing center. But naturally now the world is looking at an alternative. So India is the second alternative. So certainly API has got certain challenges on the environment factor and naturally it is a polluting industry. So we are going for zero liquid discharge. So we are hopeful that once we are able to handle those things, so API would remain very foolish and we continue growing at 15 to 20% CHR. Okay. As an API, we have to for the new molecules. So when we say, as Morpen, when we say API, we are not talking of traditional APIs. We are not talking of paracetamol and ciflexin and amoxicillin in the world. We are talking new molecules with high gross molecules. Okay. Can you show the color on this? What is the pipeline in the API businesses? How many drugs and molecules are there in the pipeline? Uh, 41 products uh, which are already currently live. Around 7-8 products are being regularly sold. And around 30 products are the new products. Within around that, maybe 5 to 6 products are, uh, I would say, off and on. Some countries are expired, some countries are not expired. But there are 20 products which are, which is like a pipeline. So the total size of the pipeline, the products what we already have in hand, is $67 billion. $67 billion for the formulation market. So as you would appreciate, formulation market is actually highly priced. So even if uh, the market uh, discounts at 70, 80%, even 90%, we expect $6 to $7 billion as the residual market price. And even if we get 10% market shares, we are home. For the other products what we sell now, for example, for Loratadine, we have about 70% market share. For Montelupas, we have got 48% market share. So, on the safe side, we 10% market share. So, five to $600 million we can easily get in the coming year. Most of the products expire after 2025. By 2025, there are a $67 billion market. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, number three question is on the OTC. Sir, you are, uh, from the last uh, few years, if you see the business of OTC, your bottom line and top uh, bottom line and top top line has been very stable and has been rapidly growing at a very slow pace. Rate. Can you throw the color on this? Sir? What is the reason behind that? Uh, sort of OTC, as I said earlier, that OTC basically is a branding business, and the branding business uh, you would appreciate is becoming very competitive because of the uh, very high tariffs asked for the newspapers and TV channels, and of course now all these e-commerce players are competing for the space even in the social media. So we had certainly planned that okay, maybe online is the way to go, but we have seen that even in the online market, the cost of customer acquisition is very high. So we are purposely keeping ourselves a little shy of the market because it involves high spend. But Dr. Morton is a brand. We are naturally getting a priority in the medical devices. There we are getting a business of say four, five hundred crores without much investment. There are nominal investments, but without much investment. It's a strategic call. It's easy to burn money and throw money, but naturally we don't have a so-called 
investors money to burn like our other startups are doing so we are a bit conservative but certainly there is a brand so we are looking for some tie ups in there also where we can get a major share so our uh, uh, so called logistics uh, hitch is that our main brand like bernal they have got a very good reach and thing but they are very i would say focused brand only for the burn so we can't grow that category burn is not a big category so we are doing some strategic calls but another 2 to 3 years time so we are planning the rocket doctor martin has to go big it's an independent company so and it is an ipo candidate so but certainly we need some good volumes we are almost at like you said stable business at 100 crores so trade it goes to 2 to 300 crores so we can't uh, go to the market so we'll keep investing and keep i would say putting house in order and once we see that okay there is a big game so we can always play there there are a lot of uh, tie ups available people who want to sell doctor products under doctor martin brand and uh, actually we don't have to invest on the branding part they would invest on the brand also there are certain foreign companies who want to tie up with doctor martin but we are bit bit slow in that because we are evaluating what is our growth path for us okay Thank you. We'll come back again. Love you. Thank you, Sarab. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhur Rati from Counters Cyclical Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, with so many new drugs and APIs in our pipeline, sir, what kind of topics as it in both our EPI as well as medical devices uh, division are we looking for in two to three years? I'm a sir in the API uh, division. So, without uh, the corporate expenses, without head office expenses, API is giving us a bit of 14 to 15 percent, and medical devices around 12 to 13 percent. But after adding corporate expenses and other things, so going forward, we are expected between 10 to 12 percent a bit uh, in the coming two to three years time. So, but on the whole, uh, the things are doing very good and make good money. Sir, uh, what kind of capex are we looking for? These two. Uh, what time? Capex. So, capital expenditure. Are we looking capital. to expand? In capex, uh, uh, certainly we have a capex plan of 125 crores for APIV business. So, which uh, for which we will uh, certainly have to go out for funding either through debt or through equity. So, we are preferring debt since our equity is already very high. And on the medical devices side, uh, there is another capex requirement of 50 to 75 crores. So that uh, we are not going out, and uh, we have internal cash flows we will be using for the medical devices. For the API, as on today, we are spending between three to four crores from internal cash accruals. So that is why there is a shortage of working capital also. And uh, since we have not borrowed any money for the past uh, 25 years, so we are. generating uh, capital uh, capex only from the uh, internal so there is actually there is a slow investment but we have huge plans for the capex so maybe once we have a better capex in hand so we can grow much faster i'm sure what kind of uh, asset owner are you looking at from these uh, investments going forward asset turnover if we look at today is it is very high it is five to six times on an asset block of 200 to 250 crore we have 1500 crore top line so going forward uh, i would say three to four times the bare minimum we look at it because now these assets are old asset which are depreciated so but going forward like you buy new asset between three to four time assets are low risk right uh, okay sir and your final question would be Sir, in our API uh, glucose monitor, uh, glucose monitor business, sir, what kind of percentage revenue is recurring in the form of strips uh, from the strips segment? In the glucose meter end, what is that? Sir, what kind of uh, uh, revenue is recurring in the form of uh, strips that we are, that we sell uh, on a recurring basis? So, if we sell uh, 10 million. Meter. So, what kind of strips revenue yeah. can be generated uh, from that? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, glucometer. Our uh, half half yearly sale is 195 crores, almost 200 crores, and 103 crores is the revenue for the quarter. 
and uh, last year uh, full full year was 250 crores now in half year we have done 195 crores so this is glucometers like i said that we have 11 million customer base so that is a recurring revenue which we get of course we keep on selling new meters also but we keep on getting the selling the strips also and sir what kind of percentage uh, from this revenue comes from strips uh, and uh, new meters Look, the, we uh, actually do not distinguish, but meters, of course, we keep selling and keep placing. Usually, meters are placed at a, at a discount to the customer so that they buy, keep buying strips. But strips is a regular business, so we can't distinguish which are old customers, which are new customers, because chemist doesn't share that data. Uh, okay, fine. Thank you, sir. And all the best. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Prakash Shah from SS Bharat. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Kunal. Uh, yes, sir. I want to talk in Hindi. Sorry, I don't speak English in English. Sir, there are some questions that you सबसे पहले मैं आपको आपके बैलेंस शीट देख रहा था सर आपके कॉन्स्टेंटली ओपीएम्स बढ़ रहे थे लेकिन वो काफी स्लो पेस से बढ़ रहे थे एंड अगेन दैट आपके काफी प्रोडक्ट्स ऐसे हैं जो मल्टीफोल्ड मतलब आप बोल रहे हैं कि यूएस में आपके काफी उसकी सेल्स ग्रोथ हो रही है सब हो रहा है लेकिन वो जनरेट उसका कोई रेवेन्यू जनरेट हो कि या फिर उसका जो फाइनल नेट प्रॉफिट में जो कन्वर्जन होना चाहिए वो दिख नहीं रहा है तो क्या आप उससे थोड़ा बता पाएंगे सर मैं आपको एक एक का दोबारा बता देता हूँ जैसे हमने मान लो ए में कहा कि फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए में 13 परसेंट तेरह परसेंट हमारा रेवेन्यू डाउन है सेल डाउन है पर उसके बावजूद भी ए जो है पांच परसेंट ग्रो किया है हाफ ईयर में उसमें कोई ऐसा एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी नहीं है डायग्नोस्टिक्स में इंक्रीज हुआ है फोर्टी वन सब बैलिशीट का फिगर है पॉपुलेशन में सोलह परसेंट आता है अगर हम कैटेगरी में जाते हैं कि कोई चीज जैसे हमने एपीआई में बोला जी हमारा एक्सोफिनाडिन चार सौ परसेंट बढ़ा ठीक छब्बीस परसेंट बढ़ा अटोरवा स्टेटिन बारह परसेंट बढ़ा और में साठ एक सौ उनतीस परसेंट ये चार प्रोडक्ट हमारे बढ़े साथ ही मैंने बताया था एक प्रोडक्ट हमारा है लोराटरी वो कम हुआ वो नहीं बिका तो हम जो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन लेते हैं कि जो सेल ग्रोथ हुई है वो कहाँ से हुई है ऑफकोर्स प्लस और माइनस टोटल करोगे तो टोटल आ जाता है टोटल में जितना आ रहा है सो आ रहा है चार प्रोडक्ट्स में हमारी ग्रोथ हुई है और एक लोराटा डी में हमारा नेगेटिव किया इसी तरीके जैसे कॉन्टिनेंट वाइज देख रहे हैं कि यूएसए ने ग्रो किया इंडिया ने ग्रो किया साउथ अमेरिका में ग्रो किया यूरोप और चाहे एशिया में और मीना मार्केट में जिस अरेबियन मार्केट्स में यहाँ पे डाउन गया सो ऑब्वियसली कहीं प्लस हुआ कहीं माइनस हुआ तो द नंबर वट वी आर गिविंग यू एज अ होल एंड अगर हम पर्टिकुलर बात करते हैं मेडिकल डिवाइसेज में ग्रो है तो चारों तरफ ग्रोथ ही ग्रोथ है उसमें रेवन्यू में भी ग्रोथ है टोटल में भी ग्रोथ है मेडिकल डिवाइस मतलब बीपी में भी ग्रोथ है बीपी में उसमें ग्लूकोमीटर में भी ग्रोथ है फॉर्मुलेशन इज वेरी स्टेबल चार परसेंट क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर है बारह परसेंट सी ए जी आर है बेसिकली आपको ईयर एज ए होल देखोगे तो सी ए जी आर देखना पड़ेगा कम्पाउंडेड एनुअल ग्रोथ रेट जो ईयर ऑन ईयर एक एक साल के ऊपर कम्पाउंडेड चलता रहता है अगर स्पेसिफिक चीज है तो आई कैन शेयर मैं समझ पा रहा हूँ आपकी बात आपके प्रेजेंटेशन में भी ऐसा ही बात है सर बस यही था कि जहाँ पर आपका ग्रोथ बढ़ रहा है इन डॉलर टर्म्स में भी अगर काउंट करें तो इस क्वार्टर में जरा भी एप्रिसिएशन नहीं है रुपी डॉलर टर्म्स में रुपी तो वीक ही हुआ है तो आपका जो ओपीएम है उस हिसाब से थोड़ा कम लग रहा है इसलिए मैंने ये स्पेसिफिकली सेकंड टाइम भी पॉइंट आउट कर रहा हूँ क्योंकि आपके कुछ पहले वाले सप्टेम्बर नहीं सॉरी डिसम्बर टू से लेके सितंबर 2021 तक आपके ओपीएम थे वो 11 10 से ऊपर ही रहे हैं उसके बाद बहुत ही ड्रास्टिकली वो नीचे आए हैं सारे ओपीएम और उसी वजह से आपके जो ईपीएस जो है उसमें फर्क आता ही गया है तो स्पेसिफिकली इसीलिए मैं ये पूछ रहा था द सेकंड वन इज आपके जो मतलब एम्प्लॉय कॉस्ट भी है वो काफी बढ़ रही है सर तो इस पे आप कुछ बता ना पाए बता सकेंगे वैसे तो आपने बताया है इसमें कि एम्प्लॉय कॉस्ट आपकी तकरीबन 74 फोर करोड़ तक आपकी जाती है क्वार्टर पे 
मतलब अगर आपके थ्री थाउजेंड प्लस इक्कीस पर सौ भी अगर एम्प्लॉयज है तो तकरीबन दो लाख चालीस हजार रूपये आपका तीन महीने का वो पे एक्सपीरियंस होता है तो उसके अगेंस्ट जो हमें रिटर्न दिख रहे हैं वो सामने उस हिसाब से नहीं है इसलिए मैंने आपको पूछा कि कहाँ पे दिक्कत है मतलब प्रीवियस फोरकास्ट जो हमने सुनी सर के सुने हुए हैं साथ है अजय शर्मा जी वो आपको बोलते हैं एक सेकंड उनको फोन शिफ्ट कर हेलो दिस इज अजय देखिए जो एपीए की बात करें तो एपीए में हमारा जो चेयरमैन साहब ने डिस्कस किया हमारा लॉटर डेन इस बार ही कम बिका है लॉटर डेन लास्ट ईयर फर्स्ट हाफ में अराउंड वन थर्टी करोड़ का टॉप लाइन था इस बार ही वो कम होकर के सिक्सटी नाइन करोड़ का रह गया है तो जो हमें अराउंड सिक्सटी परसेंट प्लस मार्जिन देता था अब उसके बदले में वो कम बिका है बाकी प्रोडक्ट ज्यादा बिके जिसमें मार्जिन से फोर्टी परसेंट है तो एपे की टॉप लाइन कम होने का कारण भी वही है उसका उसका बॉटम लाइन पे भी इम्पैक्ट आ रहा है तो एपे का अगर हम मार्जिन देखें तो एवरेजली हमारा मार्जिन फोर्टी परसेंट आता है करंसी मार्जिन तो इस बार ही बिकॉज ऑफ लॉटर इन चेंज वो मार्जिन कम हुआ है तो इसका टॉप लाइन में इम्पैक्ट आया है बॉटम लाइन में इम्पैक्ट आया है अगर हम बाकी डिविजन की बात करें फाउंडेशन में फाउंडेशन डिवाइसेज की पहले बात कर लेते हैं डिवाइसेज में एवरेजली हमारा बेटा लेवल टेन परसेंट टू इलेवन परसेंट आता है तो आज भी उतना ही मेंटेन्ड है एंड फाउंडेशन बिकॉज अभी हमारा इतना टॉप लाइन नहीं है तो उसके फाउंडेशन के तीन सेगमेंट है एक आर एक्स बिजनेस है जो ग्रांडेड जर्निक्स बिजनेस है जिसका हमारा टॉप लाइन ज्यादा नहीं तो हम उसमें हमारा जनरली लॉस आता है तो जो एपीए ने जनरेट किया है जो लोअर लेवल पे जनरेट किया है जो डिवाइसेज ने जनरेट किया है तो कुछ उसमें फॉर्मुलेशन में उसको बिकॉज उसका उसमें कुछ लॉसेज आते हैं तो उसका उसका इम्पैक्ट जो एपीए प्लस डिवाइसेज जनरेट करते हैं तो उसका पूरा इम्पैक्ट नहीं आ पाता तो मे बी इन नेक्स्ट ईयर जब हमारी फॉर्मुलेशन रेवेन्यू बढ़ जाएगा तो जो हिट फॉर्मुलेशन रेवेन्यू अभी जो जैसे इस क्वार्टर में भी चार पांच फोर्ट का उसने हिट दिया है तो दैट विल टेक केयर दैट नेक्स्ट फाइनेंशियल ईयर ऑनवर्ड यू विल हैव बेटर बॉटम लाइन एज वेल एज यू आर सेइंग एम्प्लॉय कॉस्ट तो एम्प्लॉय कॉस्ट भी हमारा अगर आप लास्ट ईयर देखेंगे तो ओवरऑल बेसिस पे टेन था तो इस बार एक रेस्टोरेंट बेसिस पे देखें तो इट वॉज टेन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट तो एम्प्लॉय कॉस्ट भी एज रेवेन्यू विल ग्रो इट विल कम डाउन बिकॉज नंबर ऑफ पीपल विल जनरेट मोर एंड दो इन एबीआई बिजनेस वी आर एडिंग मोर सेल्स टीम सो एज टू इंक्रीज रेवेन्यू बिकॉज दैट इज वी आर फोकसिंग सेम इज द फाउंडेशन बिजनेस वी हैव एडेड न्यू टीम इन द फाउंडेशन बिजनेस एज वेल सो आई थिंक मे बी नेक्स्ट ईयर विल बी अ ट्रांजेक्शन ईयर वेर टॉप लाइन विल ऑल्सो ग्रो एक्सपेंसिव विल ऑल्सो ग्रो बट इट विल टेक शेप सो विच लाइक फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू वॉज ग्रेट ईयर बाईस तेईस उतना अच्छा नहीं था तेईस चौबीस उससे बेटर होगा चौबीस पच्चीस उससे भी बेटर होगा सो यू विल सी दिस ग्रोथ एंड वॉटर लाइन गेटिंग इम्प्रूव बात पूछना चाहता था इसी वजह से क्या हम आपकी डबल डिजिट ग्रोथ देख सकते हैं अगले साल डेफिनेटली यस यस एंड आपकी जितने भी गंग्स है मतलब आपकी जितनी भी कंपनी है वो साथ ही उसमें कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट एटलीस्ट पॉजिटिव में करेगी सारी पॉजिटिव फॉर्मेशन बिजनेस हमें थोड़ा सा दे रहा है फॉर्मेशन बिजनेस स्टेपलाइज हो जाएगा तो आपके सभी बिजनेस आपको जो आप डबल डिजिट की बात कर रहे हैं वो आपको मतलब हमें पूरा भरोसा है यू सी इन नियर फ्यूचर ओके okay, और आप उस पर कोई स्पेसिफिक uh, uh, कोई नौका देना चाहेंगे कि किस रेंज में रहेंगे क्योंकि एज एज वी गो ग्रो हम आप में तरह भरोसा दिलाते हैं दैट जो आज हम नंबर दे रहे हैं कल आपको इससे बेटर नंबर देंगे यस यस बट इन डबल डिजिट योर प्लेयर्स आर डूइंग वेरी गुड एक्चुअली सर मतलब वो ऑलरेडी डबल डिजिट में है और वो काफी आगे भी है एपीआई में भी वो काफी अच्छा कर रहे हैं आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड कि आपके बाकी के जितने भी कंपनीज है उनकी वजह से कहीं पे दिक्कत आ रही है बट मैं यही जानना चाहता हूँ कि सारे गंस कब तक फायर होने शुरू हो जाएंगे और इस वजह से हमें एक अच्छा 
बॉटम इफेक्ट मिलके वो रिजल्ट में कन्वर्ट होते कब तक दिखेगा यही मैं आप जानना चाहता हूँ ये फाइनेंशियल ईयर पिछले साल से काफी इम्प्रूव होगा और नेक्स्ट फाइनेंशियल ईयर उससे भी ज्यादा इम्प्रूव होगा तो ये आपको ये मतलब इस साल में जैसे अभी फर्स्ट सेकेंड क्वार्टर में आपने इम्प्रूवमेंट देखी है थर्ड फोर्थ में इम्प्रूवमेंट और भी बेटर होगी और कमिंग नेक्स्ट फाइनेंशियल ईयर में और बेटर होगा तो आज अभी आप बोल रहे हैं नंबर्स को वट टू पुट सो विल सी नेक्स्ट टू क्वार्टर दैट विल बी इन बेटर पोजिशन टू पुट द एग्जैक्ट नंबर एज वेल सो इन नेक्स्ट टू क्वार्टर आप डबल डिजिट ग्रोथ एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं सर रेवेन्यू ग्रोथ डेफिनेटली डबल डिजिट एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं यस ओके सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू गुड थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू The yes. next question is from the line of Chin Mai Rane from Cogen Finvest. Please go ahead. Last one. Hello. Yes, Chin Mai. Yeah, so Chin Mai, not Chin Mai. Yeah. Hello. Yes, I am looking. Do we have any presence in the contract manufacturing by any chance? Do we have? Yeah. So how much is that proportion of the revenues, and how are the margins over there? Contract manufacturing for for which products? No, that is for which product we have the contract manufacturing. What do we have a segment uh, in each first thing? And if it is yes, then which segment is we are doing the contract manufacturing? In the contract manufacturing, we do some contract manufacturing for the finished luggage. So basically, there are two uh, types. One of course is the institutional business, which is. Naturally done under the company table, but there are few companies who get contract manufacturing done from us. So there okay. uh, we do under their brand name, and of course third division is our own generic division. So technically we count that also from a factory point of view contract manufacturing because our separate division. But otherwise, other than formulation, we do not have any contract manufacturing. And the formulation business, if we say, it's hardly five percent. Five percent of formulation sale on total is not less, not more than one percent. And how? In so what ways? On the total, it's not more than one percent of the total sale of a company. The formulation sales, it is around ten percent is for contract manufacturing. Okay. And so, do we have any uh, 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 any product launches uh, uh, in the next one year? Product for? Product launches in the next one year. Yeah, we have many uh, new drug launches. API also in the formulation also in the API of course there is a strong pipeline it is there mm-hmm. in our last week quarter presentation it is there on the website also and I can mm-hmm. share those things and in the formulation also there are many new products which are coming up particularly we are working on uh, some products where in uh, we are first time in the country for ECI approval but certainly mm-hmm. we are first uh, broad base our team our team now is very small on the formulation. So we mm-hmm. have to first expand the team and then uh, talk of those big products. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there has to be a balancing act. So we keep the growth momentum right and keep mm-hmm. expanding the team and then slowly keep on adding the new products. So there is a three-way okay. balance which we have to do: production, team, and the new products. The R&D center has been developed, and of course, uh, formulation export uh, facility is also coming up. So okay. To 18 months, the new export facility would also be up and running. So a lot of efforts going all around. So investors have been very patient. Okay. And uh, what will be the timeline for this? Like having the uh, people to get the production and what? What will be the timeline for? This? Or this is a continuous process. This is a continuous process. This is not a one particular project. We have a uh, full fledged R and D department. They keep on working on new products, new patents, NDDS. And uh, certainly, uh, new capacity is an extension we recently did in the last quarter, and mm-hmm. some things are still going. And you would see the formulation sales going up uh, from next quarter onwards, Q4 or say, next quarter. This this is only in Q3, but next quarter onwards, formulation sales would also start going up. Basically, I would say a lot happening on the capacity side, and we still have to work on the market side, adding teams. We have mm-hmm. to stop, but at the ground level, a lot of work has to be done on the formulation side. 
And uh, on the API, of course, uh, we have very strong uh, backend and R and D. Front end, we have added, as you have seen in the presentation. So front end is being expanded. Okay. So how many number of uh, scientists are working? Really? How many? The scientists working with us in a uh, really? We have around 36 people in the R and D. 36 people. Okay, sir. That's it from my side. I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chikori. Yeah, all the best. Love you. Thank you.